Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Shaman's Horde on Nixus Gaming. We're here in Fallout New Vegas, and today we are going to get the wonderful, get to know the Should wonderful, have set that radio signal on repeat. individual known as Dean Domino. So, let's take a seat, shall we? The Sierra Madre. Beauty, isn't she? She the one who invited you here? Or maybe you didn't catch her voice on the radio. Woke up confused like some of the others. Least you're still breathing. By the way, don't get up or make any sudden motions, no matter how uncomfortable that chair gets. The cushion's just for show. So, one thing you gotta know with Dean Domino is it is very easy for his story to end the bad way. He is a very conceited individual who always likes to stay ahead of the game, believes he is smarter than everyone else, and if you make him feel inferior at all, then you'll probably end up with a bad ending from him. Let's see what that's like. Let's just, um, let's just be as much of an asshole to him through this as possible. Hey, look, buddy. It better be a shape charge, or you're going to kill both of us. Sounds like you've done some blue-collar construction work in your life. Your ma must be proud. Still. Get up without my permission. I'll blast your ass so far through your head, it'll turn the moon cherry pie red. So. Let's keep this sweet and polite, and finish our conversation with no misunderstandings. Look, I need- you've, you've got my attention, for the moment. Just because I work in entertainment doesn't mean I'm a moron. I heard my necktie beeping, I know what that means. I'm part of this somehow. I want out of this contract. And if you put me in it, I'm not going to be too happy. So whatever's going on here, if you're part of all this, you're taking orders from me. Your negotiation skills assume you're bargaining from a position of strength. What are you talking about? Our collars, these neckties, are linked. I die, you die. That's an interesting clause. That's a real bad contract you have. We have. Agree to come with me now, or I get up from this chair and kill us both. Shape charge, or no. <laughs> all right, all right. Looks like Medage finally caught me. I'm listening partner what's next if we're death till we part meet at the fountain and we'll hear what the next step is not leaving me much choice the fountain huh hope the hologram's still working and the battery's running strong i'll follow you i'm not going alone trust me not like i'm a coward or anything i'm not running around town without an escort i'm serious one of the locals catches us, we aren't coming back, and I'd like to keep an eye on you. Oh, I think you can manage walking there without me. Now get going. Wait, wait, wait just a minute. I'm not walking out there on my own. I know what's out there. It's why I've planted a minefield, shotguns and explosives all the way on the road to my little boudoir here. So, we go together, or we're not going at all. I'll split my hand in blackjack when the time's right. I'm not splitting up in this town, trust me. Well, if I can get here, others will be, soon enough. Fountain's the safest place. That's a good point. All right, let me grab some smokes, and I'll meet you at the fountain. Don't have to take the long way back. There's a shortcut across the way, you see? It's through the cloud, but if I'm with you, I can help you through. 
So, this is where I'm supposed to put on the show. Played better venues, let me tell you. What's that there? Wiring? Looks? Looks like it's tied to the sound system in the villa. Except for that snipped section there. So, what? I stand here, hold the two ends in my hands and tap them together like symbols? I could just jab both wires into you. Close the circuit that way. Real funny. Although, you know, after your collar talk in the residential area, I believe you. Look, I strike up the speaker system. There's going to be ghosts all over this place. Any change in the sounds around here? The ghost people are not big on talking. They are big on listening, hunting, killing. More vicious than music critics, trust me. I could just throw you off the roof. What about that? You're full of it. You kill me, we both die. You wouldn't dare. So you leaving me here? No dice, not going to happen, and nothing you can say will change my mind. I don't need to kill you, you know. What? What are you talking about? I could just break both your legs, leave you here on the roof. You wouldn't. You need me to strike up the sparking cords there. Breaking my legs isn't any way to get me to dance. If I break your legs, you can't leave. Only scream. Here, in the middle of town. You wouldn't. No, yeah, you would. I would, if I thought you screaming wouldn't attract more of the locals. All right, I'll stay here for now. But you leave me high and dry, make a run for the Sierra Madre, you'll pay for it, I promise you. When you enter the Tampico Theater after threatening Dean and making yourself feel so much superior to him, which is a really good feeling because he's kind of an asshole, uh, it's going to play a little differently than it Jack normally would. Alive. Correct that. I'll break him. So we're going to do a run through just like this and see how it works out. Careful of the speakers. So you showed. Felt the collar start kicking again as soon as the elevator doors rattled open. Think you're going to upstage me here at the Sierra Madre? I don't think so. Now that I'm inside, well, I don't need you anymore. So, stabbing me in the back for the Sierra Madre. You think I'm the bad guy here? I'm not the one slapping bomb collars on innocent folks and flicking the switch. And I'm not stabbing you in the back. I was facing you all the time. This heist, I planned it lifetimes ago. You and that old man, tourists. Time for a little show. I'll just grab a seat and watch how this plays out from backstage. Security can handle it from here. Come on, Dean. Turning me to Ash. Hardly the way to end a beautiful partnership. It's a shame. I regret it. Still, you dames are all the same. Things get a little hot. You get cold feet. That's why I'm still alive. You? Well... The way I figured it, you'll try and run for the exit. And only I know where the key is. And where the safest place in the whole theater is. Backstage. You, you're trapped down there. And you couldn't shut off the speakers, unlock the doors, or cancel security if you tried. Head backstage, destroy every speaker, grab every key, then shut down security. What? What now? Try and come back here? 
No, you belong out in the audience. I mean, not like uh, you could get backstage. That key you snagged, it won't work. Really? You're a terrible liar. See you soon, Dean. Of all the... Where the hell are those stupid holograms already? Even if you get back here, you won't live long, trust me. And with that, you're going to want to make a beeline to this door right here. You can take out this hologram emitter if you want. It just opened the door on me and got me caught by that hologram there. Stop it. The perks of having extra companions during all of this. Uh, you can see that I've done this many a times, and I can show you the best way through this. You're going to want to come around here before you go in the door. Go ahead and shoot that. Dip in, turn that off, and you'll want to grab this backstage key here. Immediately in here, you're going to have another speaker. Take that out, and you can walk over here. Head in here, turn this radio off, grab the key, head back here real quick before the collar explodes. And now you can play Dean's Hollow Tape at the Tampco's projector. You can come here, go ahead and turn off all the speakers. And make another dash across the main room. Now that is, it is safe from almost everything. Couple holograms left up to here. And let's go ahead and play the copyright music. With that, we run back across to where Come Dean on, is God. for our final Sweet. confrontation. All right, you're resourceful. I'll give you that. It's going to take a lot more than juggling keys and shooting speakers to stop me. As I see it, all I need to do is kill you, then make a run for the exit. You do the same. You'll be clawing at the lock until your head blows off. So, maybe you and I should have a little chat. Just like we did when you first waltzed into town. You're not a betting man. Which means I'm betting you have the key to the exit on you. Lucky guess. You sure about that? Because if you make a mistake, well, Sierra Madre's got us both. No, based on your response, I'm sure of it. All right, all right, look. I'll hand it over, I promise. No need to get all upset. We can both come out ahead in this. Quit stalling. Hand it over. Look, I give you this key, and there's nothing to keep you from just killing me and running. And as I see it, I just gave up my ace in the hole. So the only chance I've got left is making sure you don't leave. And there's no way in hell I'm letting you get to the Sierra Madre vault instead of me. Not after all this time. Has the cloud decayed your brain? Forget the Sierra Madre. I waited an entire lifetime. Sitting in that villa, watching it all fall apart. Sinclair's Sierra Madre towering over everything? Untouched! Then you show up, thinking you can just take it all from me. You and the old man running the show? I planned all this. I made it all happen. Not you. Sure, yeah. I have the key on me. I made other keys, too, to unlock the casino in ruin Sinclair, finally. After all these years. No. Now... Now I think ruining you and all your plans would be enough for me. Kill me, I still win. You're never getting in the vault. Yeah, yeah. Time for more fighting. I know. With that, we are forced into combat with Dean Domino and must kill him. Get to the door before the collar explodes. Move! We can take his tuxedo, too, and just further embarrass him on our way out. 
is his dead body now being in the nude. But that just about covers it for the bad ending to Dean Domino's story. Now that is sadly the ending that a lot of people that don't really know this game get to Dean Domino. You, If you do anything, like I said, anything to upset him... Shut the fuck up. Shut up, dude. If you do anything to upset him or make him feel inferior, it automatically sets you up to fight him at the end, which... I mean, if we're completionists, if we're good... If we're on, like, a good playthrough, we probably want him to live, but how do we do that? Well, we just gotta do everything he says and make him feel that like he's in control the whole time. So let's see how that playthrough died. turns out. The Sierra Madre. Mm, beauty, isn't she? She the one who invited you here? Or maybe you didn't catch her voice on the radio. Woke up confused like some of the others. Least you're still breathing. By the way, don't get up or make any sudden motions no matter how uncomfortable that chair gets. The cushion's just for show. What are you talking about? Might be a bit rude, but that chair you're sitting in. It's got a shaped charge in the seat cushion. Get up without my permission. I'll blast your ass so far through your head, it'll turn the moon cherry pie red. So, let's keep this sweet and polite, and finish our conversation with no misunderstandings. I'll save my questions for the end. Please, go ahead. And that's what I've missed. A rapt audience. Just because I work in entertainment doesn't mean I'm a moron. I heard my necktie beeping. I know what that means. I'm part of this somehow. I want out of this contract. And if you put me in it, I'm not going to be too happy. So whatever's going on here, if you're part of all this, you're taking orders from me. I'll cooperate. What do you want? Good, good. Then we're in business. I may be a betting man, but I like it when the odds are in our favor. If you're here with who I think, then I'd rather have you on my side than his. And it's in the hole. You want to live, I want what's in the madre. Real simple. I'm in. If that's all, let's head out. All right, all right. But you already got company, so tell you what. I'll meet you at the fountain. Don't have to take the long way back. There's a shortcut across the way, you see. It's through the cloud, but if I'm with you, I can help you through it. If you do. So with that, he usually joins you, but it seems I have forgotten to get rid of Christine, so he will not join us. Ugh. Be right back. And now that I have redone it and gotten rid of Christine, Dean joins us and gives us the Unclean Living perk. This perk grants you a short period of time before taking damage inside a toxic cloud, as well as reducing the amount of damage you take inside the toxic cloud by 25%. Don't have to take the long way back. There's a shortcut across the way, you see? It's through the cloud, but if I'm with you, I can help you through it. If you didn't already force the lock to the gate, that is. Now he's going to mention for a third time this episode his little ability that he gives you. That we just got a description of. He's going to point us through this shortcut here that has the cloud in it. But if we walk in, you'll see in the top right that Dean is protecting us from the toxic cloud. Now don't spend too much time in it. Because it is only temporary. You can't stay in there forever. But if you head back this way, you get a nice little shortcut back to the villa. Alright, now that we got everyone back here at the fountain, let's talk to Dean. Maybe get to know him a little bit better and bring him to his gala position. Was that him floating above the fountain? The boss man? The one who put these bow ties on our necks? 
Sure does like to make a presentation. We should keep it down or else the ghost people are going to swarm the gates. Vera hologram or no. You know anything about this Scala event we're supposed to trigger? Supposed to be the grand opening of the Sierra Madre. Lots of lights, music, the works. And he's going to use the gala event to open the casino? But that's interesting. Why? It sure is interesting. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. Maybe the drain in power. That'll cause the security systems to shut down enough to let us in. But getting back out? No, the place will close up tighter than an opening at the Fronds. Or Danny Parker's sphincter when he has to tip a doorman. The gala is even tied into the the ba ba the gala events tied into the casinos generators. Right. Look. So not everything about the villa was the pinnacle of bright ideas. In order to pull off the gala, Old Sinclair had to get creative. The Sierra Madre announcement, for example, not just for the casino, not at all. The gala's tied to the casino, draws on its power. Might cause it to reset itself, open the doors for a bit like it was supposed to. What do you mean about the broadcast? Well, Vera's beautiful voice doesn't run on casino power exactly. Her broadcast is tied into the emergency broadcast signal for the Sierra Madre. You know, in case of attack. Well, guess what? The night of the gala event, the emergency signal went out all right. But because the broadcast had been hooked up to the gala event, instead of an emergency signal, you get Vera's voice on the radio. Great, huh? So, it's not an invitation. It's a call for help. Yeah. The Sierra Madre's last song. One only a few people are ever going to hear. A little sad, but what can you do? Okay, have other people shown up in search of the Sierra Madre? Tourists, you bet. They don't stay long, and they don't stay alive long. If they survive the cloud, the ghost people, the traps, then greed takes over, and they start sizing each other up for funeral suits. So, the visitors all killed each other? Sure. First they figure they can get out, escape. Then they start thinking it over, start thinking about how they can have it all. They start weighing the odds, taking risks, and then taking each other out. Bomb collars are not. Although, it's odd. The bomb collars weren't linked before like they are now. Guess someone learned what the problem was. So what happened to the people who came to the villa? Dead. Either got killed by one of the villa's attractions, locals, or the beautiful weather. Can tell you right now, they didn't stick close to each other, and when they did, they let down their guard at the wrong moment. Some left signposts to others trying to help them out. Just led to them getting killed by someone a little more greedy than they were. Any advice to getting through this? Well, considering my life's on the line too, yeah. A few things. First off, keep everyone together. Keep checking behind you. Make sure your partners are following. Don't let them wander. Also, don't go running crazy everywhere. Almost every inch of this town is lethal. So if you're not sure, take it real slow. And speaking of slow, don't go shouting or attracting attention. Go quiet. The ghost people find you. It's over. These ghost people, they're the only ones alive around here? Alive's a tricky word. The locals, the ghost people, not sure it applies to them. They're a little uncivilized. They don't talk much, as in at all. Have you tried to deal with them? 
tried talking to them, bribing them, leaving food, nothing. In the years since, they haven't changed their approach, but I sure have. They catch you, they drag you into the cloud, and you're not coming back out. After that, having your necktie go off would be mercy. My advice? Stay out of their way. They don't die easy. How tough are they? You shoot them, they get back up. You stab them, they get back up. That's why I have explosives all over this place. Unless you blow them up, chop them up, disintegrate them, the ghost people don't go down. Not enough bullets in the town to spend on them. So unless you're a real good shot, save one for yourself right before they catch you. I'm a fair shot. One shot, one kill is how I handle problems. Well, you seem like you know how to handle yourself. All right. Once, I fired a lucky shot, hit a gas tank one was holding, blew his arm off at the shoulder, and he didn't get back up after that. So if you're that good, don't aim for the head, aim for their bombs. And if you can wait until his buddies are close by, even better. So where did they come from? Friend, there's more mysteries in heaven and earth. Wait, no. If there is more between heaven and earth, oh, forget it. I'd sooner ask what makes me an undying son of a bitch than spend any thought as to why they crawl to life here. I'm counting myself lucky. I still have my faculties. They sure don't. Then again, they may not have had the focus I do. Focus? Always had the Sierra Madre to keep my mind occupied. Most folks, they don't have the same drive, the same need. Not worth my time. Pretty much ghost people before the bomb, now ghost people after. Is there anything else about them I should know? Whatever we do, don't rile them up. Normally, there's only a few, maybe a pack. There's more out there, a lot more. If they find out someone's trespassing, it'd be shaking a hornet's nest. Don't want to think how many of them could fill these streets. Of course you do. Let's hear them. Before, you mentioned the hologram at the fountain. Vera? Do you know her? Yeah, don't you? Or, guess where the keys got lost along with the rest of the hollow archives when the bomb hit, huh? Ghost in name and image. Still a looker, though. Got to hand it to Sinclair. Sure can pick him. Well, or get picked. Whichever. Can you tell me about her? Vera was a big star back before the bomb. Not the best actress, but... Well, she had other talents. Nice voice, nice legs. For some reason, Sinclair, he built this place. She caught his eye. Once he was hooked, that was it. Had to have her. So made the introductions and guess what? He builds this place for her like some kind of Cleopatra obsession. Wasn't always a death trap. Introductions? You knew her before? Of course. What? Some kind of surprise to you that I knew people once? Used to have my name in lights, all right? Knew a dozen Veras or whatever her name was. Uh, Vera Keys. Figured I could pay Sinclair back. Introduce the two. Guy was a slouch in the dame department. Had to pick up the slack somehow. So what are the vending machines all over town? According to the marker, you're slated for a spot in Puesta del Sol. No, looks like a rooftop in Puesta del Sol. In better days, nice view. Now, it's the last place anyone wants to stand when this event goes off. That place during spring, summer and fall, a little bit in winter, is a prime resort spot for ghost people. Not the best of neighborhoods. 
If we're going there, I'm not going alone. And if you have any bright ideas about telling me to stroll over there, or leave me there, no thanks. Any idea why he wants you there? Partner, I'm not sure this guy's operating with a full deck. My bet? Process of elimination, lowest common denominator. He figures the strong man's needed somewhere, even if it sounds like the strong man's two minds about it. Plus, I'm guessing wherever old doggy boys needed doesn't need smarts. I hope not. Or we're royally jonesed. What about Christine? Christine, that her name? Nice name. I mean, you can't see it on posters, but never mind. I don't know. She might need to hold some place where speaking isn't important. Like stage tech? Lighting? Got me. And me? I've had prime billing in Europe, New York, and this gig doesn't feel like that. Don't get me wrong, I can hold an audience, conduct a score from the rooftops, but I'm guessing I'm the odd man out in this whole heist. I'm not following you. Odd man out, dead weight. Someone you need holding the toolbox, the nurse passing the scalpel, the chauffeur driving you to the concert. Any guy with hands is who he needs up on that rooftop. Guess he thinks I don't rate looking like I do. Poor him. All right. Well, I think we should travel together. Strike up the band. Domino's back in town. After that, he joins us again, and we can head to his spot in the Gala event. You're at the Ghoul's Gala area. Now make him stay. So, this is where I'm supposed to put on the show. Played better venues, let me tell you. What's that there? Wiring? Looks? Looks like it's tied to the sound system in the villa. Except for that snipped section there. So, what? I stand here, hold the two ends in my hands and tap them together like symbols? That's the plan. Are you going to be able to do it safely? Well, safely? Around here, that word doesn't come cheap. Look, I strike up the speaker system. There's going to be ghosts all over this place. Any change in the sounds around here? The ghost people are not big on talking. They are big on listening, hunting, killing. More vicious than music critics, trust me. All right, what's it going to take? Take? It's not going to take anything because you couldn't offer me anything to stay here. The ghost people will come out of the woodwork when the gala event starts blaring. And when they see me trapped up here, it's curtains for Dean. I'm not going to let any harm come to you, all right? No, you're not the type, but accidents happen, good intentions or no. Look, you could offer me a steel-clad contract for a world tour of all major cities with Imperial records. I still wouldn't stay here. If I clear out all the ghost people in the area, will you change your mind? No, you want to know why? Because there's more beneath the streets, in the buildings, and no, everywhere else. They hear anything out of the ordinary, especially music screaming through the speakers when I close the connection. They'll be here fast. I mean, the villa has holograms everywhere. If I switch on some to cover the area... Well, yeah. If the hologram system still works, that'd do the trick. Okay, all right. You call up some of those old world stiffs. That'd be an audience I wouldn't mind having below. Okay, let me see if I can reactivate them. If I remember correctly, there should be two holograms you can switch on in the area. Just don't remember how. Do that, and I'll consider waiting on the rooftop. Maybe. 
Alright, so in order to do this the way Dean wants it done, we have to turn on two holograms to protect him from the ghost people. The first one is going to be really easy. You just come down these stairs and the terminal is right here. Activate hologram. The second one can be a little confusing to get to. It is in that opening in the wall right there. Now, if you're good, you can kind of jump around the edge there and follow this all the way around straight to that hole. If you, oh no, accidentally fall, I believe the intended way to get there is to come around this corner and enter the ruined cafe. From here, you can walk down this hallway, up the stairs, turn around into this room, exit this door, and you are suddenly right over here where we fell, and you can work your way into this hole in the wall and activate the terminal. And now we just need to let Dean know that it's safe for him. Didn't think much of our chances. Now I'm thinking I was wrong. What's the next step? Both holograms are on now. It's safe for you to get to your position. You powered the holograms up? Well, yeah, that's pretty good protection. Sure worked at the fountain, Vera kept the ghost people away. But, uh, how do I know the power won't suddenly go out? And, I don't know, this still sounds risky to me. For me. Dean, a man with cold feet isn't someone I'd share a bed with. Wait, hold on. I didn't say I was scared. <laughs> cold feet. Don't be ridiculous. I've played to worse crowds than this. I can hold the fort here. But listen, when this thing goes off, try and get into the Sierra Madre without me. You'll wish you hadn't. And with that, he stays behind to man his position for the gala events. Let's go meet him at the theater now. Now, this time, when you enter the theater, having worked closely with Dean the whole time and not pissed him off, it should go a little bit differently for us. Is that ghoul still alive? Correct that. Or break him. Mostly the same. Getting back to the backstage, the only different bits are going to be talking to Dean. Finally, a friendly face. Hey, partner, up here. The in a bit of a predicament here. Had to duck backstage, take a powder. The audience is a little murderous tonight. Uh, how did you get up there? No idea. Woke up here, thought I was dreaming for a second. Right back on the stage, the mic. Thought I was back at the fronds. Well... Except no audience used to pack theaters back then. So, stepped up on the stage, checked things out. Then suddenly, holograms walked out of the wings. They started raising their hands to their heads, all creepy-like. Not a good sign. Wait, what holograms? What are you talking about? Look, those ghosts are going to come out of the wings behind you in a second. The security types, not the friendly, bald types. And if you got in here, the door's probably locked tight behind you. So don't back up or run for the exit. You're not going to make it. Trust me, as soon as you can, run to the door to the left. Use the key you got out of the music rag there and camp out. As bad as things are, it's going to get a lot worse if either of us pops. So get backstage until we get a better plan. Wait, I need to head to the door to your left or my left? What? Oh, uh, my left, your right. So yeah, run to the door on your right. <laughs> Almost got you killed there. Us killed there. I need a little more than that to go on if we're gonna break out of here, Dean. Uh, right. Uh, let's see. When you get the door open, there'll be an exit door dead ahead. Don't take it. It's most likely filled with toxins from the vents, so hug the wall. Make as much space between you and the door, or it's cloud nine in a casket. 
Past that is my dressing room. Under the table, there's a footlocker. It's tucked back a bit, so you might miss it. Inside, a gun, some ammo. Not much help against the ghost. Still, if you're about to give up, call it quits. Throw it to me, so I can eat a bullet first. Ian, the theater speakers are wired to a central sound system, right? Yeah, y yeah, so what? We got bigger problems with the holograms. No, uh, no, wait, you're right. The theater piped music and sound backstage, which means those little squealers are in the corridors back there too. Calm down. Do you know specifically where? Uh, let's see. Um, once you break right, watch each turn in the corridor. One will be on your right, past my dressing room, and up. Oh, uh, my dressing room. May have left the radio on, right by the table. Uh, if you could just shut it off instead of blowing it a... Uh, never mind. And there was a speaker in the prop room, too, on the wall between the entrances. And... Well, walk slow. There's bound to be more. That's the radios and speakers. What about a central sound system? The speakers are all controlled by a central console. It's the farthest from the only door out of here, so you'd need to do a full circuit of the corridor to get to it. Once there, you'll need to shut it down, and I don't have the code. If you have the code, you can turn off all the speakers, make them settle down. Getting backstage should buy us time, just take it slow. Getting backstage is a temporary measure, if I can't find the security terminal. Yeah, yeah, right. So, let's see. Security's here because the show hasn't started. Guests aren't allowed in, so... Guess we need to start the show. <clears throat> okay, so when they were setting this place up, we had rehearsals, and uh, <laughs> Sinclair even set up hologram recordings of the shows so we could watch and critique our performances before a fake audience. Whatever. Thing is, when the recording queued up, a nice, calm, appreciative audience appeared in the theater. No security with their head blasting zap rays. So, find the music. Get it to the projector room upstairs, then play it? Might reset security with a shot. Alright, makes sense. Where's the music? The holotape should be where I left it. No, no wait. It's uh, it's in Vera's dressing room, probably. May, maybe a key to her room on my desk. Anyway, snag the key out of my room and look around Vera's room. The holotape has to be there. As for getting it to the projection booth, well, sometimes Vera used to watch from the projection booth, so she must have had a master key. Look around her room. Might be there. What are you doing with the key to her room, Dean? Do I have to spell it out? Come on. Time's wasting, and those holograms are going to be on us any second. You know, this is a casino's security system is pissing me off. You are preaching to the choir. Sinclair and his security don't even get me started. Those holograms... Look, just get rid of them, all right? Tried to slip off stage, then they all started changing color and raising their hands. Not a good sign. All right, and just like before, you're going to want to make a beeline to your right, not Dean's right. They're gonna open the door again and get me caught like last time. Go ahead and take out the hollow emitter. Turn to the left, take out the speaker, go in. Turn off the radio, grab the key to Vera's room. He also let us know about his ammunition box with the ammo and there should be a gun somewhere in the gun case. If you really want it, we don't need it. Continue on, he told us about this speaker. In the room here, take that out. Keep pushing through to Vera's room so we can grab the music and the key, come out, and turn the speakers off. So careful what you touch in there. Be respectful. I forgot to turn the speaker off. 
if all right and this time we do all that again but don't forget the radio turn that off and then turn off the ambient sound system and we're safe just gotta do a sprint across here we didn't take out the hologram this time so he is perched right there in front of where we leave if you're fast enough don't even have to worry about them and you can get over to the copyrighted music and then we head over and this time we won't have to kill Dean oh those electric ghosts aren't the kind of audience I like at the best of times at least the ones in the villa had manners don't even know how I ended up here. Guess the casino still recognizes guests, even after all this time, huh? <laughs> How's that for history? Yeah, lucky us. Love getting shot at by pre-war ghosts. Look, I'm more about the short goodbyes than long, thankful speeches. But I appreciate you bailing me out of a tight spot there, partner. I know you didn't do it out of the goodness of your heart. So, let me give you something a little more practical. A way we both come out ahead. What do you mean? I'm not an idiot. I know the reason I'm in here now is because of the old guy. And you. And you're wearing a collar, so I trust you a little more than the old guy. He's more controlling than I'd like. Thing is... Here's where being my partner pays off. See, I know how to get into the casino vault. What do you mean? There's a private elevator, Sinclair's elevator. It's up in the executive suites in Vera's room. Not a coincidence. Vera. She was my other partner before the bomb. Took some legwork. Some convincing made it happen. How so? Sinclair was already puppy eyed, so all I had to do was the introductions. She smiled, fluttered her eyes, showed a little leg, and he built this whole place for her. Made her the key to his vault, like a joke, because of her name. Her fake Hollywood name. Except Sinclair didn't know I'd been there first. I could twist her whatever direction I wanted. Go on. All she had to do was get inside the Sierra Madre for the gala, then use her voice to open the door. After that, smooth sailing. Would have been the biggest heist in history. Sinclair left holding the bag. Ruined. So what happened? The bomb. Vera got sealed in here. A few hundred years go by, give or take. Almost the end of the story. Then you came along. Now we finish the job. Rob the Sierra Madre, rip out its heart. Last chapter of Frederick Sinclair. Close the book. What was your problem with Sinclair? Problem? All high and mighty. Lording it over everyone. Acting so self-righteous, like nothing could touch him. He was the one with the problem. Never got mad at anything, nothing seemed to shake him. Even after his life kept getting dragged through the dirt. Always kept looking for the bright, shining future in everything. So... I decided to take everything from him. But what did he do to you? Do to me? What, weren't you listening? He thought he was better than me. Don't believe me? Look around. This big casino. 
this big, colossal monument. Think it was for some woman? No. All ego, all self-righteous in lights, fit him perfect. Had to take him down a few pegs, bring him down to my level. Begin again? Some things you don't get up from. I was going to prove it. So you're going to prove it now? How? I didn't know at first. Then the old man showed up. You showed up. Then that woman showed up, covered in scars. The one who makes all the hand signs, a little tight around the corners of her mouth. I put her in the clinic, tuned her like an instrument. If she heals up, it's not going to be her voice speaking anymore. That is, if the Sierra Madre didn't get her. If it did, well, there's enough of Vera around for me to spend a few years piecing a book together. And if she is alive? Then she can make some beautiful music. I'm not banking on it. So here's the short of it. Piece together Little Miss Vera Key's song in the right order. Sierra Madre opens its legs when in business. All right, I'll head out and see what I can do on my end. Go, knock yourself out. I'm just going to catch my breath a bit. That performance, well, more pressure than I was expecting. And with that, that is the last we will see of Dean Domino during this DLC. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I was really dreading doing it because I know I would have to basically play through the DLC twice in order to get his good and bad ending. But overall, it wasn't too bad. I enjoy being an asshole to the asshole Dean Domino himself. But I enjoy getting to know him too because he has some nice stories and he can tell you a lot about the pre-war Sierra Madre. Such as all the stuff between him, Vera, and Sinclair. We also learned from him that he was the one that threw Christine in the auto dock in order to give her Vera Keys' voice so that she could open the vault. There's a lot of stuff you can learn from this guy and overall he's not terrible. I still don't like him though. But thank you all for watching. Next time on the Shaman's Horde, I believe our buddy Domino here has hidden some stashes away throughout the Madre and the Villa for us to find. So stay tuned for a collectible hunt. Bye bye Dean Domino, entertainer, singer, thief, explored the Sierra Madre not long after he was rescued by the courier. Once he left the theater, the Sierra Madre recognized him as a guest, and many doors opened to him. He had to admit it had been built to last. During his search, he came across the final records of Vera and Sinclair, and realized what happened the night the bombs fell. He felt strangely sad for a moment, and he had no idea why. Shrugging it off, his mind turned instead to where the courier had come from. Vegas still survived, out there in the Mojave. Its sights, sounds, and casinos, ripe for the taking. So, giving the Sierra Madre one last nod and a wink, he set off beyond the cloud to begin again.